Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, January 16, 2022. I am Reverend Mary Tillman, an associate minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be your presenter for today's lesson. Our winter quarter study is Justice, Law, History. We're in Unit 2, God, the Source of Justice, and this is lesson number three in Unit 2, and the lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is The Laws of Justice and Mercy. And the title in the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults is Unbiased Actions. Our devotional reading, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. Our background scripture is Exodus 23rd chapter, and our print passage, Exodus 23, verses 1 through 12. Our key verses in today's lesson are the second and third verses of the 23rd chapter of Exodus. From the NIV Bible, it reads, Do not follow the crowd in wrongdoing. When you give testimony in a lawsuit, do not pervert justice by siding with the crowd. And do not show favoritism to a poor person in a lawsuit. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our understanding so that we may practice unbiased actions and avoid spreading injustice and ungodly behavior in our daily lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our lesson introduction. Biases are prejudices in favor of or against one thing, person, or group, and usually it's in an unfair manner. We have either experienced prejudice or we're guilty of allowing prejudices to dictate our relationships. In our churches, biases about doctrine, worship, and preferred styles of music have infiltrated congregations and caused schisms and the loss of loving Christian fellowship. Biases also feed acts of social injustice. Those who are culturally and ethnically diverse from the mainstream culture are targeted for mistreatment because of ill-found biases against them. The United States justice system is the most recognizable area of biased injustice. We see it in our schools, communities, and our courts every day. We know that people of color are more often given harsher sentences for identical or even lesser crimes because of our ethnicity. God expects fair treatment and social justice for all of us. It matters to God how we treat each other, and we must give an account to him for failing to do or follow his standards for social justice and equity. God established his standards in Exodus 20 and subsequent chapters by providing examples of his commandments to Israel, his chosen people, regarding fair and unbiased treatment among themselves and toward others. And this lesson awakens our consciousness to the fact that God's standards do not change with the times. He still requires fair treatment to all of us from all of us. I believe this lesson comes to life right here in today's troubled society where there is so much hate and where it appears that what was once wrong is now considered to be right. But let me remind you, God's laws regarding humanity have not and will not change, for we are all God's children. So, get your Sunday school book, your Bible, a pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this lesson. Let's get started. There are three questions I'd like for you to consider. Question number one, what specific role can believers take to ensure more equitable justice in our legal systems? Question number two, how can we overcome the tendency to allow 
our preconceived notions about others to control our behavior toward them. And question number three, what do these specific laws reveal about God's character? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. The events in this week's lesson take place during the first year of Israel's liberation from bondage in Egypt. And you know the story of Pharaoh. God sent Moses down to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. The stage was set for the institution of the laws and religious practices that governed the nation throughout its history. There were basically two types of laws God gave to Moses. Casuistic laws and apodictic laws. The first type of Old Testament law is casuistic law, which applied only in specific circumstances. And you can identify those in the Old Testament by the words of, if this, then this. Read Deuteronomy 25, 1 through 3. The second type of Old Testament law is the apodictic law, commands that Israel could not violate. There were no exceptions to these laws. They applied to all Israelites and provided direction and instructions on things they could and could not do. The characteristic form of this type of law is you shall or shall not. And we see that in Deuteronomy 25 verses 4 through 10 for an example of this type of law. All of these laws were intended to ensure that justice was equally applied to all people within the Hebrew community. The Ten Commandments were God's instructions that were to govern Israel's covenant relationship with him and with each other. The first four detail the basis of this relationship. Read Exodus 20, 1 through 11. God expected Israel to acknowledge and obey him because of who he is. The last six commandments, Exodus 20, verses 12 through 17, spell out the requirements for and the responsibilities to family, neighbors, and communities. Living as God expected was to be vertical. That is, first we honor God, and then horizontal, then we honor others. God is always to be first in our lives. Then we treat others right because when we have a proper relationship with God, it determines how we relate to each other. Today's lesson focuses on the application of the ninth and the fourth commandments. These specific principles detail how to execute justice and mercy in Israel's courts and toward neighbors. The observance of the Sabbath, Exodus 23, verses 10 through 12, expands to include the use of land as a blessing to the poor and the animals. God established these laws, and they are still essential for us today. Let's dive into the study of the lesson. This week's lesson's aims are, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Remember that God expects believers to care for others. Aspire to be impartial in showing justice and mercy. And practice helping those who are in need. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is Uphold the Truth. And we see that in Exodus 23, verses 1 through 3. The second outline is fair treatment for all. Exodus 23, verses 4 through 9. And the third lesson outline is justice and the Sabbath. Exodus 23, verses 10 through 12. So that includes our entire lesson outline. Outline number one, uphold the truth. Exodus 23 verses 1 through 3. And it reads, do not spread false reports. Do not help a guilty person by being a malicious witness. 
Do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you give testimony in a lawsuit, do not pervert justice by siding with the crowd and do not show favoritism to a poor person in a lawsuit. Verse 1 begins with an apodictic law forbidding members of the community from passing along false and baseless claims about others. Here, the reference is to spreading rumors and claims that were not true, especially if it concerned other members of the community. Liars were severely frowned upon in the scriptures, and we see that in Deuteronomy 5 and 20, Deuteronomy 19, 16 through 21, and in Proverbs 6 and 16. And I just want to read this. It says, These six things the Lord hates, Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Now, then we skip down to the 19th verse. It says, from the New King James Version Bible, a false witness who speaks lies is one of those seven abominations that we just read about. A false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord among the brethren, that's one of the seven things that the Lord hates. And in Proverbs 12 and 17, it says, He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness, deceit. Let that just kind of marinate for a minute or two. Key point number two, verse two is the second law that called upon the people not to align themselves and follow the multitude in committing evil. The law acknowledges that the crowd is not always right. We see examples of this in Numbers 14 verses 1 through 10 and in Exodus 32 verses 1 through 5. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. And that's the NIV translation of that particular verse. In verse number three, it prohibited the people from showing favoritism toward the wealthier party in a dispute simply because the other person is poor. Partiality and favoritism are just wrong regardless of who is the recipient. In many cultures, those who are wealthy receive greater access to determining the laws and more leniency than the poor when charged with similar or identical identical offenses. This set of laws was written to prevent individuals from damaging people's names and reputations by spreading falsehoods. The spread of malicious rumors through a congregation can do extreme harm that in most cases can never be repaired. We must be mindful of the message that we declare to be truth. Outline number two, fair treatment for all. And we find this in Exodus 23 verses four through nine. And it reads, if you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering off, be sure to return it. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you fallen down under its load, do not leave it there. Be sure you help them with it. Do not deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits. Have nothing to do with a false charge and do not put an innocent or honest person to death, for I will not acquit the guilty. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds those who see and twists the words of the innocent. Do not oppress a foreigner. You yourselves know how it feels to be foreigners because you were foreigners in Egypt. Key point number one, verses four and five are laws pertaining to how the Hebrew people were to relate to their enemies in daily living. God expected his people to extend a hand of kindness and assistance even to one's enemies. These are examples of a casuistic law wherein one action was to lead to a corresponding response of kindness. God commanded them to show justice not only to each other, but also to strangers and enemies. The second precept involved helping the owner of an animal which has stumbled under the weight of a heavy load. 
Rather than walking away, God required the simple compassion, ki compassionate kindness of assisting the owner by helping to relieve the animal of the overload. And we find that in Deuteronomy 22, verse number 4. Believers are expected to avoid the you kill my dog, I'll kill your cat payback mentality. That is not the right attitude or the, beha the behavior that God expects from his children. Key point number two. Verses six and nine present the next set of apodictic laws dealing with justice. Each of these four laws deals with some aspect of justice and how it was to be executed in ancient Hebrew society. Any deliberate perversion of justice was strictly forbidden, including denying it to the poor, bringing false charges against the innocent, executing them based on fraudulent charges, and mistreating foreigners or strangers living among them. That's a lot to digest, but literally... Believers are experiencing perversions of justice right now in this country. In response, the responsibility is to use the power of the vote supported by prayer to ensure that men and women of integrity sit in our courts and are part of the other areas of the legal system. And right now we know that voter suppression has again raised up its ugly head in the South and working its way more toward the north. There are 18 states right now, I believe, that are revising the voter laws to restrict and suppress the vote of the black person or the people of color. They are trying to make it more difficult for absentee ballots, for registrations, and for getting to the polls and making the hours of voting convenient. We need men and women of integrity, men and women of color, in our courts and part of the legal system by registering to our, our volunteering to be a part of this legal system. The Hebrew people were commanded by God to apply the law without prejudice. Fair treatment regardless of race, gender, appearance, social status, and education should always be the goal of a free society. And while it is stated in our Constitution, we know for a fact that that is not always the case when it comes to people of color. However, everyone lives with some form of de or degree of prejudice buried deep within. We can overcome the tendency to mistreat or distrust people who are different by applying Jesus' teachings regarding interpersonal relationships. How do you feel about this lesson? It's a very eye-opening lesson as we continue with God's plan for God's people. Outline number three, Exodus 23, verses 10 through 12. For six years you are to sow your fields and harvest the crops. But during the seventh year, let the land lie unplowed and unused. Then the poor among your people may get food from it, and the wild animals may eat what is left. Do the same within your vineyard and your olive grove. Six days, verse 12, six days do your work, but on the seventh day do not work so that your ox and your donkey may rest and so that the slave born in your household and the foreigner living among you may be refreshed. Key point number one, verses 10 through 12 present the laws pertaining to the Sabbath and or an expansion of the fourth commandment in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 10. For six years, the people would work the land, growing various crops that would sustain them for the rest of the year. But after farming the land for six straight years, the land was not to be utilized in the seventh year, giving the land a rest. This was the Sabbath year. During this seventh year, while the land was uncultivated, some seeds would still grow and produce a small harvest. Any produce from the fallow land was reserved for the poor to come and harvest it for themselves. And after the poor gathered their harvest, all that remained was for the beast of the fields to eat. The twelfth verse concludes this lesson with a call to rest on the seventh day. 
This law reflects back to the first Sabbath in Genesis when God rested after his creation of the universe. No one was to work on the Sabbath day, not even the servants or the animals. It was to be a day of rest for all. Key point number two. In the early church, Christians worshipped on Sunday instead of the Jewish Sabbath. Sunday is the first day of the week and is set aside to remember the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. People ask, why do you all worship on Sunday? Well, now this you can use this to explain it. It is set aside to remember the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Sabbath is significant because it reinforces the continuing need for remembering God and giving him the glory he deserves. Why? Because he's God. Within the faith community, a primary day of worship allows the believers to come together and share in collective celebration of God's gracious love. As we celebrate God, our faith is strengthened and we are made stronger as a community of believers. God's people need rest and renewal for the journey throughout each day of living. How do you spend your Sundays? Are you remembering the resurrection of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Do you take out time to reflect on what it means to be a Christian? Well, we need a day of rest. Some of us work seven days a week. We need to take out time for rest and renewal for the journey ahead. In summary, this lesson opens our eyes and understanding that since the beginning of time, God ordained and instituted a divine plan of justice that is equal and unbiased without favoritism or bribery, always doing what is right and honorable. However, in the United States of America, history tells and shows us that God's laws have not always been practiced, not even today. African Americans have had to contend with a legal system that was and is often stacked against us. The slave, code, the slave codes and Jim Crow laws were written to ensure that African Americans would never have an equal chance at success. But as Christians, we see time and time again how God continually shows up and in spite of society's attempt to keep us down, we bounce back. This bounce back ability is because of God's grace and his mercy. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Our ancestors found a way to overcome and today we continue to walk by faith in our God. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. For the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, sisters and brothers, not by sight. I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. What an eye-opener and how appropriate for this season in our lives when they're trying to pass uh, Congressman John Lewis's voters' right bill in the United States Congress right now. There is a battle going on, but we must continue to fight, stand up and fight for what is right, praying and asking God for guidance so that we don't make the same mistake and go down the wrong path. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this lesson. Please help us to understand and follow your laws in everything that we do and in every circumstance that we encounter. Help us to be more productive citizens as we try to right the wrongs that society has created. And help us to remember that in all things, we give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.